Hi guys, welcome back to Reflections by Wakeji Kamore. I'm Duko and I've been with you for the last few days and this is our last day going through the book of Ruth. I'm a bit sad but I'm also excited because this chapter for me brought out different lessons um, this time around than any other time I've read the book of Ruth. So we'll start with reading through the chapter and then I'll share a bit about what I've learned from it and leave us with a question to think about at the end of the session. So I look forward to spending this time together. Yeah. <laughs> so chapter four. Boaz went to the town gate and took a seat there. Just then the family redeemer had mentioned, oh, sorry, I need to go back a bit. Uh, chapter four. Boaz went to the town gate and took a seat there. Just then, the family redeemer he had mentioned came by. So Boaz called out to him, Come over here and sit down, friend. I want to talk to you. So they sat down together. Then Boaz called ten leaders from the town and asked them to sit as witnesses. And Boaz said to the family redeemer, You know Naomi who came back from Moab? She is selling the land that belonged to her relative Elimelech. I thought I should speak with I thought I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it if you wish. If you want the land, then buy it here in the presence of these witnesses. But if you don't want it, let me know right away because I am next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, all right, I'll redeem it. Then Boaz told him, of course, your purchase of the land from Naomi also requires that you marry Ruth, the Moabite widow. That way she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. <laughs> then I can't redeem it, the family redeemer replied, because this might endanger my own estate. You redeem the land, I cannot do it. Now in those days, it was a custom in Israel for anyone transferring a right of purchase to remove his sandal and hand it to the other party. This publicly validated the transaction. So the other family redeemer drew off his sandal as he said to Boaz, you buy the land. Then Boaz said to the elders and to the crowd standing around, You are witnesses that today I have bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilion, and Mahlon. And with the land I have acquired Ruth, the Moabite widow of Mahlon, to be my wife. This way, she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband and to inherit the family property here on this hometown. You are all witnesses today. Then the elders and the people standing in the gate replied, We are witnesses. May the Lord make this woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, from whom all the nation of Israel descended. <coughs> then the elders and all the people standing in the gate replied, We are witnesses. May the Lord make this woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, from whom all the nation of Israel descended. May you prosper in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. And may the Lord give you descendants by this young woman who will be like those of our ancestors, Perez, the son of Tamar, and Judah. So Boaz took Ruth into his home and she became his wife. When he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant and she gave birth to a son. When the women of the town, sorry, then the women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord who has now provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age. For he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. Naomi took the baby and cuddled him to her breast and she cared for him as if he was her own. The neighbor women said, now at last Naomi has a son again and they named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the grandfather of David. So this is the, genealog this is the genealogical record of their ancestor Perez. Perez was the father of Hezron. Hezron was the father of Ram. Ram was the father of Abinadab. Abinadab was the father of Nashon. Nashon, the father of Salmon. Salmon was the father of Boaz. Boaz was the father of Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse, and Jesse was the father of David. <sighs> Guys, <laughs> every time I read this book, it's just so interesting. Um, 
we've come from chapter three where Ruth had presented herself and been vulnerable to Boaz. And Boaz had taken that vulnerability and said he'll go and fight for her right, literally, um, because she came with the land. Um, and there was a rule or an order that the family redeemers uh, would go in a certain flow. Think about it like the modern day monarchy where, for example, Harry can't be prince unless he's G. Where? Because <laughs> as long as Charles is there, then it will be William, then William's first child, like that. So there's a certain order. And in case that person is not there, then they'll consider the next level from a different angle. So it was a similar thing that in the family line, there was the order of who would be the first to redeem and then the next one in case that person wasn't going to be able to do that. And that's what happened here. So we find Boaz actually going and asking this guy. And the thing I liked about how he came about is that he was very wise because who is not going to say us to land? So he really thought about how he was going to ask for this because I feel that deep down he did desire to be with Ruth because of how he had seen her through the harvest season and how she had respected him and seen him as an older person. So he actually felt seen. And I think that influenced how he went about it. So he knew that when you're a family redeemer or a kinsman redeemer, as it says in other versions, that you get the land and you get the wife or the, the woman of the land so that you can preserve the lineage of that family. But he also knew that probably this guy had some family drama or complications that wouldn't allow him to do that. And so what he led with was that there's this that would be interesting, which is the land. Would you like to buy in? And the guy's like, yeah, sure. But then he shifts it. He's like, but to buy it, you have to get his wife to who's a Moabite. Remember the story for the Moabites also. I think it also played a factor here. Um, in as much as she was married, she was from Moab. And if you're a staunch Jew, you're probably thinking, mm, no. I don't know if that's what he was thinking, but it could be one of the factors. Or that he had already a complicated family situation and wasn't going to be able to do that. I think Boaz was really smart to lead it off that way. That he would preserve the lineage of this family by marrying this woman of this household and protecting their land. And it's so interesting that he picks up both, not only Ruth's husband's land, but because now everyone was dead and Opa is gone. and Well, all the men were dead and Opa is gone and Ruth is taking care of Naomi. She not only got the inheritance of her husband by being married to Boaz, as we've read, she also got of the father and the son. So this was like a triple inheritance in a way. So Boaz was able to redeem even more for her just by that one act of obedience. The thing, other thing I like, we've seen this throughout this, this book of Ruth, is that the community was involved. Notice from the beginning to the end, there's been a mention of the community or the women. In this case, it happens twice. Boaz invites witnesses, 10 people, to be able to see so that it is not refuted that this man has passed over the right to him. And the same witnesses bless him. That's the part that made me excited. They're like, in verse 11, then the elders and all the people standing in the gate replied, We are witnesses. May the Lord make this woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, from whom all the nation of Israel descended. May you prosper in Ephrathah and, may, and be famous in Bethlehem. And may the Lord give you descendants by this young woman who will be like those of our ancestor Perez, the son of Tamar and Judah. They loved on them and they blessed them. And they blessed them not Kidogo. They blessed them to be more like fathers of nations of Israel. At this point, well, they might have known that the blessing comes through Abraham and they were the descendants through uh, Judah and Tamar, whole other story. But they were still blessing him with those blessings that came all the way from the book of Genesis to now. I find that to be beautiful. The second aspect where you see this community and we spoke about this a bit in chapter one. When the women saw Naomi, they saw her pain. Because she told them, don't even call me Naomi anymore. Call me Mara because I am bitter. Those same women come to say to her, praise the Lord who has now provided a redeemer for your family. This is in verse 14. May this child be famous in Israel. 
May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age. For he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. They were watching. They were watching. They were blessing. They were loving. And they could see the transformation of Naomi's life from a place of emptiness and loneliness to a place where she was nursing her grandson. How beautiful is that? And how easy is it to imagine that our lives are just our own, that we don't have people surrounding us? For me, that really struck me. And the last thing is the story of redemption. What we said this book was about. That blessing from the women to Naomi was what... The blessing of the women to Naomi felt like what Christ did for us, where we came from a place of emptiness, complete loneliness, being lost, being away, and then being found and being filled and being restored by our Kingsman Redeemer, by our the bigger Boaz, the son Jesus Christ, who comes directly from the lineage of Boaz, because as we read on, Boaz was the great grandfather of David. And David was in the lineage of Jesus Christ. Why it not for this person taking the initiative to save Naomi and Ruth? We probably wouldn't have the story that we have now. But because he was seen in his old age and because he saw that she saw him, that Ruth saw him and was vulnerable to him, he redeemed her and Naomi and their lands. And they could sing a song again. For me, that's just so amazing. And that's Ruth chapter 4. And so as we get to the end of it, it gives me hope. Because when I think about chapter 1 to where we've gotten now, it started from a place of death, of loneliness, of bitterness. And it ends with a story of love and family and community. And for me, that is nothing to do with marriage. <laughs> As we've always experienced the book of Ruth, it has everything to do with our lives in community and being redeemed by Christ. The question for today is, would you be open to be redeemed? And if so, if you'd like that support, you can comment below. If you receive this, um, you can ask the person who shared it with you to help you to get that guidance to redemption. If you liked this, the book of Ruth, like, subscribe, share, you know the drill. Let people know about it if it has been impactful for you. It has for me. And also take time to go through it again. I've gone through this book a couple of times preparing and every time it comes out different so i love you guys thank you for having me here today and have a good one bye